Adaptation of a literary classic. Adaptation, right? I said adaption. That would have been right. Friday morning. You're all right. <laughs> the big screen version of a cult TV show are on area screens this weekend. Yeah, here to Just review to The read. Call of the Wild and Fantasy Island are uh, film critics Pam Paul and Chuck Kaplinski. Hey, guys. Good How are you? Morning. Hi. Morning. We're off to a good start. How's it yeah. going? <laughs> We're going to begin gonna... with right. The Call of the Wild this yes. morning, yeah? Yes, you two please talk before <laughs> The adaptation. Right. The adaptation of adaptation. Call of the Wild. And I, I don't know what adaptation this is. There have been quite a few movie versions of Call of the Wild, dating all the way back to the Clark Gable version in 35. And we've had Charlton Heston, Rutger Hauer. And now we have Harrison Ford as John Thornton, the guy in Call of the Wild who is going north into the Yukon to look for gold. But really, the story has always been about, and always should be about, Buck. The dog. Yes. There he is. There is Buck, the do bought dog who is dog napped from his beautiful home in Santa Clarita, California, where he is in the house where a judge lives and his huge family. But he's dog napped and sold off, and he is plunged into the wilderness where he has to change and become a leader of the pack in the sled dog uh, team that he uh, ends up with before he goes off with Thornton into the wild. Oh I taught this book. I taught this book for 20 years, so I have a special affinity for it, and perhaps I'm too close to it because I got to tell you, I really hated this movie. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I really you're too hated close this to movie. It, then. Uh, no, I don't think I am. Uh, <laughs> this movie just ruins the book. Uh, it ruins the. Uh, it, it, it becomes ridiculous too. This dog in the book is a super dog. He's doing things that no dog should be able to do. But in this movie, this is a, like a dog from Krypton. Okay, this dog is doing things that. I mean, he is intuitive. He knows that John Thornton's an alcoholic and gets him to quit drinking by no. knocking over his bottles and things. But he knows that John Thornton has an affinity for his dead son and, and brings out a book with a picture of his dead son in it right at a key emotional time because he's just so in touch with everything. This happens. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> As a, oh, and that's the other thing where he gets trapped under the ice, and boy, he gets out of the ice unrealistically and then has a, an oar in his mouth to help things out. Just <laughs> comic like, <laughs> relief. I can't tell you how much I hated this stuff. It looks kind of strange seeing that. Harrison Ford next to this, like, and not only that, the dog doesn't work. The dog doesn't work. There are no, I don't think they even had a shot of a real dog and then go back to the CGI dog. It's not quite there. You always tell that the dog isn't it's there. Fake. They're all <laughs> fake. And Ford does his best, and he's given a stupid backstory that isn't necessary. Waste of time. Wow. Right? I'm blown away on this one. See, and you're going to like it because you love dogs. I do <laughs> love dogs. But you know what? And, and I didn't read the book growing up. I read part of the book, but when they start to beat the dog, I am such a dog lover, such an animal lover, that I couldn't make my way through the book. That's the point. I know, I know. I, I was a kid. Give me, cut me some slack here. Um, and I couldn't read Old Yeller either, and I couldn't watch the movie. So, but this this movie, it was okay. I don't think it's as awful as you say it is. And if you haven't read the book, or if you would enjoy a movie about a dog, and you can relate to dogs, I think you're going to enjoy it. The do CGI dog isn't great. It's close, but it's not great. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I think it's an okay movie. I, I question a lot of the um, uh, wardrobe choices. How do you wear not wear a hat and, and the casting and as well the casting is all wrong with those the mail carriers too and, and uh, how about the bad guy so, with Dan? Oh, in the bag. Give me a break. Yeah. He, was like, he was like dastard. You know. You know. Was, why didn't he twirl his mustache as well? Between the two of you, it sounds like it still averages out to. Eh. I, I probably would not go to pay money to go see this film. However, it okay. wasn't as bad as Chuck. I think Chuck okay. just loved the book so much. Yeah, because we wouldn't want to read a book. No heavens, no. <laughs> Books always better, though. But okay, yeah, I get, I get your point. We do movie I reviews here. Well, we do movie I will reviews. I let you keep going on it. Okay, <laughs> Fantasy Island. Okay, now, now this is going to be my my Not little the show on back. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> In the 1970s, I used to watch Fantasy Island to play. That plane. explains a lot, doesn't it? I, and I used to watch The Love Boat. Shocker that too. explains a lot. I watched The Love Boat. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Um, this this is this is a total waste of time. Um, <laughs> I, I really have nothing good to say about it. There's not one ounce of originality in the film. We've got Lucy Hale playing one of the main characters. All of the people are transported to Fantasy Island because they think they've won this contest and they get to have a fantasy come 
come true. All they have to do is like write a good Yelp review and say, hey, we're all good. Um, and uh, everyone's there under false pretenses. We don't find out a lot of information until the end. And we also have a lot of miscasting. We see Mr. Rourke there as a Mike, with Michael Pena, not Ricardo Montalban. Um, mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. film, ooh, this storyline just kills me. Um, and I just can't want even to talk about I it. can't. The Fantasy <laughs> Island just needs to, it becomes a nightmare, and it was a total nightmare for me. I just needed to be transported out of that. Did you turn it off? I'm glad. No, I, I, had had to, I went to the theater to see oh. it, so I couldn't walk out. Hey, my fantasy's gonna come true. There won't be a part two. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned Michael Pena. Boy, that was a mistake. Wasn't it, though? He's so bland. You need a Mr. Work, work, work that's charming. <laughs> Or someone like Vincent Price, who's charming but a little devilish, right. because these stories all go horribly bad. Yeah. And this is a shame, because Bloomhouse uh, does great horror films, and they, I'm sure they wanted this to be a franchise. And they could have gone, had they been more clever, yeah. they could have done this again and again, but it just doesn't land. No, they, they don't have any originality. No. And, and they okay. only invested $7 million, they've made $23 million already. That's how he's a success. Yes, right. Bloomhouse did it. Well, sometimes we tell you which movies to skip. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, we um, suffer, so you don't have to. That's right. Yeah. Real talk with oh. Chuck and Pam. Real quick. Oh, we've got a winner. We have Ooh. Lori Kello Choquette. You win. Jojo Rabbit. I will Yay. send that out to you. And we have another contest with Knives Out next week. Check out our Facebook page to find out how to enter that one. Very awesome. good. Thanks, All guys. Right. Thank you both You're so back. much. We'll be right back.